crews are making progress on a series of fires near Cheney, but there are still evacuation notices in place. We have an update and the latest information from the fire line at the Cheney Complex fire. And over the last few days, we've been dealing with plenty of wind around the Northwest that hasn't done a lot of help for uh, all those fire concerns. We'll be talking more about where we see winds headed as the next couple days come around. And we do have an update to an E. coli scare that happening in one eastern Washington city. The city just got back lab tests and we have what you need to know about it. Hi everyone and thank you for being with us on Creme 2 News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti sitting alongside Jen York today. We will get to that story in just a moment, but first, crews say they are making progress on containing the Cheney Complex fire. However, there are still evacuation orders in effect right now. There are level two evacuation notices for areas west of Griffith Road between Highway 904 and the railroad. There are level one evacuation notices for homes west of South Ritchie Road and north of the railroad tracks and half a mile east of Griffith Road. Highway 904 is open to traffic. Fire officials say lightning sparked four smaller fires that are the makeup of the Cheney Complex fire, exactly what we're talking about right now. And authorities say three of the four fires right now under control. However, the complex is still considered 0% contained. Today, we're told that firefighters will watch for hot spots. And right now, they say the fire charred about 160 acres total. Crime News' Nicole Hernandez is joining us live near Cheney. And Nicole, you spoke to a homeowner who may have to evacuate. What's the very latest with that? Yeah, that's right. So the couple that we spoke to actually lives in a house that was in this evacuation area here. Last night, that area was in level three evacuations. And you can actually still see the smoke down there. That smoke that's over there that Al's showing you right now is actually just outside the homeowner's backyard. The powers had firefighters holding down four at their house all through last night. They said that because of the rough terrain, firefighters actually had trouble getting to the to the fire to fight it. The couple had to pack everything important while they watched crews and planes keep flames from encroaching on their house. Uh, they said, if we got to evacuate and we tell you to go, please go. And I said, you bet. So we packed up the, the important stuff, I hooked, hooked the RV up, hooked the boat up to the other truck. And I said, you tell me to go, we'll be out of here in less than two minutes. And they said, if we tell you to go, it'll be an emergency. I said, you betcha. The area the powers live in is still under level two evacuation notice as of right now. And when I asked Frank Powers about his nerves seeing the fire this close to his house, he said all they could do was pre be prepared. Even if they lost their house, it would be just possessions and that they would still have each other. Now, after everything that happened yesterday and through the night, Frank Powers just wanted to say thank you to the firefighters who were so generous and helpful throughout the entire night, making sure that their house didn't burn down. Live here in Cheney, I'm Nicole Hernandez. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Nicole, thank you. And Al behind the camera there, they've been yeah. working hard out of the fire lines all day today and uh, hopefully getting some more progress on that fire as we head into the afternoon. And it is getting warm. We'll get more on the weather coming out with Evan. That's right. So crews also in Douglas County are working to contain a growing wildfire. They say the Desert Canyon fire is about 1,000 acres in size. However, today crews are working on mapping that fire to get a more accurate estimate. It is just north of Orondo. Level three evacuation notices are in place for two homes near Browns Canyon Road. There are also level one evacuation notices near the Allville Fruit Area. No injuries are reported. For updated information on the go, be sure to check creme.com. You can also find that information on the new Creme 2 mobile app. If you have our old app, go ahead and delete it. You have to download the new app. It's great for situations like this and will keep you updated on the move. Absolutely, and especially with our changing fire situation, changing weather. And speaking of that, we do want to bring in Evan Narani. Uh, firefighters actually getting a break from some gusty conditions this afternoon. But even they will have to be fighting the heat, Evan. And that's exactly right. We have seen a lot of calming of the winds, especially compared to what we saw over the last several days. Yesterday, gusts made their way to the 30 mile per hour range. Sustained winds were in the teens. Today, 
today, mostly single digits. We've got eight mile an hour winds in Spokane, six in Coeur d'Alene and Deer Park, and four in Ritzville. These a lot calmer than what we saw uh, what we saw yesterday and the day before on our Tuesday. As far as temperatures go, still a bit warm out there, nearing 80 degrees in Spokane. We're at 77 in Spokane, 80 in Moses Lake, 73 in Colville, and 82 in Pomeroy. What we've got over the next 12 hours shows that we should make it to about the mid 80s for afternoon highs, but notice how those wind speeds stay generally calm. We're single digits is what we're expecting. Gusts maybe in the 10 mile an hour range, which is a lot calmer than where we saw them over the last several days. And then overnight, by the time about 8 and 9 p.m. rolls around, we'll start to see those temperatures decline down to the 70s and the 60s once again. Coming up, we'll talk about how long this uh, very summer like weather pattern will last. I'll have details in just a bit. All right, Evan, thank you. A quick update here at the noon hour. We are taking a look at the Avista power outage map. It appears power is mostly restored for customers following Tuesday's thunderstorm. Right now, there are just more than one dozen outages impacting some 50 customers or so. Now, at the height of the outages, some 20,000 homes were without power. So and we're I, getting some progress. And I've been driving by and seeing the crews. They were, you know, Hats off to the Avista crews. They are out there night and day. So uh, well done getting the city back up and running. Okay, it is 12.06 right now, new at noon. The city of Medical Lake leaders there say the water is now safe to drink. This is after experts thought E. coli might be in the water. So take a look at the notice posted to the city's website. It says all water samples from the northwest portion of the city came back actually negative for bacteria. It says the water is safe to consume. Previously, some 130 homes and businesses were encouraged to boil water or drink bottled water. But again, the city of Medical Lake says the water is indeed safe to drink. That's good news because you know how frustrating yeah. would it be to boil your water? And right now uh, it's yeah, warm and people are boiling water and trying to get extra bottled water. Mm -hmm. So yeah, glad to see that, that that's been changed. And you know what's great? We're talking about summer. You know what's great on a hot summer day? Ice cream, right? For sure. We were at Laura Papetti's back porch yesterday <laughs> and the ice cream man rolled by. That's right. We like that. But today you can help local children by doing just that. We'll tell you how you can get involved. 